It's 6 p.m. on Monday here in Korea. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Hwang Ji-hye. And these are the top stories we're following at this hour. A committee meeting to grant approval for the labor reform deal struck yesterday is barely limping along with one of the labor union representatives strongly opposing the approval and trying to burn himself to death. While labor reform plans face a bumpy road ahead, profitability of Korea's major companies failed to their lowest fall to their lowest level since 2008 due to continuing union conflict and a sluggish global economy. As it struggles to cope with thousands of asylum seekers' arrivals, Germany imposes controls on its border with Austria. In what was supposed to be a meeting to gain approval for a labor reform deal reached yesterday, a union representative tried to set fire to himself, suspending talks today. Our Kim Min-ji starts us off. About an hour into Monday afternoon's meeting at the Federation of Korean Trade Union Central Executive Committee, Kim Man-je, head of the Metal Workers Union, attempted to set himself on fire. The meeting was supposed to determine whether to approve the tentative labor reform deal reached between representatives from labor, management and government over the weekend. Some union representatives strongly opposed it and called for the head of the umbrella union to resign. So what were the agreement's contentious points that crippled the talks? The tripartite committee agreed in principle the company should be allowed to sack poorly performing workers. This was under the condition that the criteria and procedures must be worked out between experts, labor and management before any workers were laid off. But union representatives argued that this would make it too easy for companies to lay off workers. Current labor laws stipulate that companies can terminate an employee's contract if they are involved in a corruption or an embezzlement case. As it stands, companies in serious financial difficulty are also able to dismiss underperforming workers. Another disputed area was the easing of labor restrictions that require companies to gain an employee's consent before changing the terms of their employment. The government has said easing the regulations is a necessary step to get private companies to implement a wage peak system, which will guarantee employment until retirement, but with lower wages after a specific age. Although the deal said such processes will come after negotiations between labor and management, labor union representatives argue that management could go ahead and implement regulations as it wishes. Kim min Arirang News. While well, whether the deal will gain approval remains to be seen, the ruling's Henry Party has vowed to push through the legislative process for the proposed changes. But the opposition has said it would increase the pressure against the ruling party's actions. Our Ji myung reports. The ruling Saenuri Party and the government agreed to push ahead with legislating a bill to carry out the government's labor reform plans. Our party has received the government's proposed labor reform bill and we will propose the bill in the name of our party. We ask the opposition's full cooperation to successfully complete legislating the bill at the National Assembly. The Saenuri Party plans to convene a general meeting of its lawmakers this Wednesday to discuss the legislating procedures and have the bill passed during the parliamentary regular session. The labor reform bill will include easing regulations to allow companies to dismiss underperforming workers and also allow companies to change the rules of employment. However, the main opposition New Politics Alliance for Democracy said it is against making it easier for companies to lay off workers, as it would only increase job instability. Although the provision recommends employment contracts to be consulted with experts, companies can still easily fire workers. The agreement has instigated job insecurity for regular workers and no improvement in working conditions for non-regular workers. The opposition bloc said that while it would deliberate the bill at the Parliamentary Labor Committee with ruling party lawmakers, it vowed to block any unilateral legislative activities. 
as reforming the labor market has become a key agenda ahead of next year's general elections, rival parties will likely have a tough time working out the details of the labor reform bill. Kim young -gil, Arirang News. In a major reshuffle, Korea's defense ministry named Army General Lee Sun-jin as the new chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff on Monday. The 61-year-old is a graduate of the Army Academy in Yongcheon North, Gyeongsangdo Province, and was commander of ROK 2nd Operations Command. Army General Tang jun gyu was named Army Chief of Staff. Army Commander Kim hyun jip was named Deputy Commander of Combined Forces Command and Air Force Lieutenant General General Jung Kyung Do will be promoted to General and Air Force Chief of Staff. As the planned inter-Korean family reunions draw near, South Korea's Red Cross kept busy on Monday listing eligible survivors. They carefully selected 250 surviving South Koreans from the preliminary shortlist of 500 people that were prioritized based on age, health and whether they're seeking to meet immediate family or more distant relatives. The second list of candidates will be handed to North Korea on Tuesday. The final list of 100 people will be exchanged between the two Koreas on October 8. A total of 200 war survivors, 100 from each side, will reunite with long-lost relatives at North Korea's Mount Kumgang Resort from October 20th to 26th. Korea's manufacturing sector is at growing risk at home and abroad. Operating profit among the top 30 conglomerates is down sharply, even lower than during the 2008 global financial crisis. Connie Kim reports. Coming on the back of global economic slowdown, Korea's manufacturing sector is on red alert. According to related industry reports on Monday, operating profit among Korea's top 30 conglomerates logged 48.9 billion U.S. dollars last year, lower than the 51.1 billion dollars recorded during the 2008 global financial crisis. The poor corporate report card is partly due to fierce competition from Chinese rivals. Hyundai Motor Group maintained an average 10 percent market share last year, but this started dropping in May. Korea's tech giant Samsung Electronics also lost in China to its Chinese competitors in the second quarter this year. China's Xiaomi and Huawei took more than a third of the Chinese market, while Samsung held just 9 percent. But as Korean firms largely ship intermediary goods to China, experts say that even more concerning is China's increasing use of its own intermediary goods. The small technological gap between Chinese and Korean intermediaries is another worrying factor for Korean companies. Chinese intermediary goods have high price competitiveness. Korean exporters will be hit hard when the Chinese yuan devalues faster than the Korean won devaluation. Domestic conditions aren't helping the manufacturing sector either. Unionized workers at Hyundai Motor Corporation voted to strike this month, lending support to their leaders in wage negotiations. It'll be the fourth consecutive year of such strikes if it goes ahead. Kumo Tire, whose management and labor unions are also at loggerheads over wage issues, has seen a loss of more than $100 million in sales during their month-long strike. Experts say there are growing calls for compromise between the two to provide a flexible labor market and allow corporate expansion in investment and employment. Connie Kim, Arirang News. Increased tax revenues from cigarettes are expected to rise 10.6 billion U.S. dollars next year, a 0.27 billion dollar increase on this year's revenue. Main opposition New Politics Alliance for Democracy lawmaker Yoon Ho Jung, presenting data from the Korea Federation of Taxpayers on Monday, said the total tobacco tax for 2015 will be 9.4 billion dollars. Compared to the tax index before cigarette prices were hiked in January, next year's increase is 4.9 billion dollars. Additionally, the Taxpayers Federation said the government had only considered the price increase would deliver a 34 percent drop in consumption, whereas in the past three months, the decline was just 23 percent. 
The global smart TV market is posting rapid sales growth, and this great news for Korea's Samsung Electronics and LG Electronics that are blazing a trail as market leaders. According to market tracker Display Search, over 40 million smart TVs were sold worldwide in the first half of this year, accounting for 41 percent of total TV sales and surpassing the 40 million mark for the first time. Last year, around 35 million smart TVs were sold worldwide. TV sales have been falling from 2009, but sales of smart TVs have been seeing annual growth of over 13 percent since 2013. Demand for smart TVs in the last two years has been especially high in the Americas, with a 90 percent increase in sales in South America and a 68 percent rise in North America. Last year, Samsung and LG were the top two manufacturers of regular and smart TVs sold worldwide. Germany's open borders have been shut at least temporarily. The country has suspended all train traffic from Austria, warning it has now reached its limit for taking in any more refugees. Our Sun Jung In has this report. This is Munich train station, which has become a key arrivals point for refugees making their way to Germany from Syria via Hungary and Austria. Refugees breathe a sigh of relief to know they have arrived safely. At least 50,000 asylum seekers have entered the country in the last week alone after Chancellor Angela Merkel effectively opened Germany's borders. But now Germany says it has reached the upper limit of its capacity. The country's interior minister made the announcement on Sunday. He said Berlin was introducing temporary border controls to limit the huge wave of refugees, starting with its southern border with Austria. The aim of these measures is to limit the current inflows to Germany and to return to orderly procedures when people enter the country. This is necessary for security reasons. In a parallel move, Germany's National Railway temporarily suspended train traffic to and from Austria between Sunday afternoon and Monday morning local time. The European Union is still at odds on a common response to the migrant crisis. Eastern countries, including the Czech Republic, Hungary, Poland and Slovakia, have repeatedly ruled out accepting refugees under a compulsory quota system outlined by the European Commission. Interior ministers from the 28 member states are meeting in Brussels on Monday afternoon to discuss plans to redistribute 120,000 people seeking asylum throughout the continent. Son Jung In, Arirang News. 18-year-old golfer Lydia Ko has won the Evian Championship to become the youngest major champion ever. An amazing final round of 63 on Sunday saw the Korean-born New Zealander finish on 16 under, six shots clear of American Lexi Thompson. Ko becomes the youngest player of either gender in the modern era to become a major champion. Her victory also means Korea's Park Bi, the world number one, will have to wait at least another year to complete her super career Grand Slam. Park, who has won two majors this season, ended at five under, trying for eighth place with two other Korean golfers. Now, did you know that Korea is one of the breakdance capitals of the world? On Sunday, Seoul hosted an international breakdance competition, bringing together eight of the best b-boy teams in the world. Our Kwon jang -ho has the details. Welcome to the R16 World B-Boy Championships. It's held in Korea every year, and it's one of the top b-boy competitions in the world. This is Team Korea, and they are warming up for the big event. They reached this year's World Finals by beating all before them in Korea's national eliminations. That's no mean feat. Korea has one of the most competitive breakdown scenes in the world. Over the last 13 years, 18 of 32 major World Crew titles have been won by a Korean team. This success has brought them unprecedented support from the government. In fact, R16's main sponsor is the Korea Tourism Organization. We wanted to show the world that Korea has a modern and dynamic youth culture. There were national qualifiers in 25 countries. It was a useful opportunity to show a new side of a Korean culture. The Korean b-boy scene has come a long way since the turn of the century, 
when performers were largely looked down upon by Korean society. When we first started to win international competitions, we would still proudly wave the Korean flag. B-boying has now found its place among Korea's Hallyu content, and it's well regarded among the wider public. Team Korea won the performance section of the competition, but in the main battle event, they were beaten in the semi-final stage by the home nation of b-boying, Team USA. Although Team Korea did not win this year's main R16 title, Korean b-boys can still be proud of their immense achievements over the last decade. And there's always next year. Won Jang-ho, Airang News. Korea celebrated its 27th day of printing culture on Monday with those who have contributed to developing Korea's printing culture recognized with a presidential citation and a cultural merit award. Vice Culture Minister Pang ming Gwan recognized 23 people for their continued efforts in developing an eco-friendly printing environment and related products. The awards help encourage the industry to boost morale and continue their research and development. The ceremony also held greater significance as Korea will host next year's World Print and Communication Forum. The forum will enable Korea's print industry to position itself globally and was established in 1989 after Printing Industry Association from over 50 countries met to discuss current and future affairs for the industry. <laughs> And that brings us to the end of our newscast. More updates coming up at 10 p.m. Korea time, so stay tuned and goodbye for now.